actually turn the recording on. So announcement, I sent out that Google form. Most of you in here filled it out, except I'm just going to name drop. Joseph hasn't filled it out yet. <laughs> About a little swamped. And when I was baby. actually going through it right now. I don't actually know <laughs> how to answer some of these questions. I just wanted to name drop. I don't, I'm not picky. Ever have Janelle's filled it out, Seth's filled it out, Cheryl's filled it out. Anna doesn't have to fill it out. Anna's already done with all this crap. <laughs> She's already done. Um, so based on the Google form, what I'm what I'm seeing, I'm going to implement something. I just th I'm just thinking this out loud. I yeah, one one person was a couple of people are saying set deadlines on the met eds and maybe have a discussion about them after we do them. So what I'm now probably going to do not be a bad guy because I don't like being a bad guy I like being a nice person I don't want any of you to hate me but I'm probably gonna start setting deadlines for the med eds soft deadlines I'm not gonna come after you if you don't do one within the deadline I give you but I'm gonna start setting a soft deadline and set up a google calendar with the link what med eds do all that for each week I'm probably gonna only make like two of them do or one of them do and if you've already done them, then wow, you get a free week. Cause like Cheryl's done them all already a long time ago. Um, Gabe's already done them all too. There's two of you that have done them all. A couple of you don't have done some of them. Janelle sent me a couple of them. So I'm going to start, I'm gonna set that up and we're gonna start making deadlines. Cause I'm thinking some of you don't have a deadline. You're like, oh, I can just wait until the end of the summer. However, Colin is making a concoction of med eds for all of you to do. Oh, hi, Stella. Stella, you gotta do the med eds also. Stella better do her med eds. I'm watching Stella her. Stella is so cute. <laughs> She's so cute, oh my gosh. Um, So I'm gonna start setting it up tomorrow. I'm not gonna make anything due next week because I'm just spouting this out, but the week after, until the end of the summer, I'm gonna start making them do. So that's one That's one change. Um, Colin's also gonna do a because a lot of you make comments about how you love Colin's discussions. And he has told me he doesn't know why you all love him so much. But here we are. Because <laughs> we, we were reading, I sent it to Colin to look at the Google form. Like three of you said, we love Colin's discussions, but we want Colin to do a workshop. And he's like, what do you guys want with me? So Colin's going to do a workshop next week. Um, I didn't get a time with him. Shoot. Um, it's going to be Wednesday, June. Oh, Kirk's here. Um... The workshop is going to be day to day, Wednesday, June 23rd, because 20 seconds game night. Wednesday, June 23rd at 7 Eastern, EDT. I think we're in DT. I don't remember. EDT, <laughs> he's going to be doing a forecast workshop. And then the weekend after, Dr. Peterson is going to do a communications workshop. I don't know what he's going to bring, but he's going to bring something. I was like, here, do this. And he's like, okay, so... That was the other thing. And eventually in next month, we're gonna have Tom, um, Mr. T come in and do a workshop also for four. Yeah, Anna, Mr. T is gonna come do a forecasting workshop. He's already agreed. I'm just gonna let Colin torture you all first before you get Mr. T. <laughs> I wanted to let Colin torture. So that was the other thing. I'll set up Zoom links, Facebook events, all that. I just haven't had a chance to because I've been working on adding a minor all day yesterday and all day today and juggling with Dr. Johnson, Dr. L and the registrar. So I haven't had time to do that. So I'll make Facebook events. So 23rd, 29th are going to be two more workshops. Um, and then we might do one more broadcast workshop. I'm getting, I'm getting mixed messages on it. We're about at 60, 40. So it's like, some of you want them, some of you don't. I'm probably going to throw one more and then just for good measures so look for that coming out soon and if you haven't like i said if you haven't done the google form please do the google form so i can get some more accurate data that's only from five people what i've heard and thank you for those five people because your ideas are very very good because we're going to start doing some transitioning to more forecasting considering everyone who has answered this has agreed that they're not ready to record reels for their mentors because they don't know anything yet so we're gonna do a transition. And so now you don't hear me blabbering because none of you came to hear me blabber. 
I wouldn't blame you. You came to hear Dan Dan blabber about broadcast. So now it's Dan's turn. Have fun, Dan. Oh, and he will blabber. I guarantee you that. Uh, <laughs> seriously, stop me if, if you need or want uh, any questions highlighted in that. But uh, I'll just go here. I guess I'll just start off with how my uh, my career has been so far, I guess. Uh, and to that end, when you were talking about recording the reels, I'll even just start there where uh, I recorded mine in the basement of our community college, faked a forecast for three minutes and put it in post in PowerPoint. So anything you can get done there, I, as I understand you, FIT is get, getting the broadcast stuff done there. It wasn't when I graduated, so I was class of 2013. Um, but it's great, so great to see that this is, is becoming more of a thing, especially at FIT. Uh, it, of which I have my tie here. I had I tried to dig it out there and I finally found the darn tie. But um, so I was actually, I went from gainfully unemployed to chief meteorologist in one phone call uh, back in 2014. So I'd been graduated for about a year. I sent out my resume to, I, I you know, cold sent, I guess, like cold called 350 stations uh, before I ended up finally getting a job. This was in San Angelo, Texas. So this is market 196 out of 210 uh, TV markets that are in the US here. And it's small potatoes, but the weather was incredible. And I ended up serving as chief met there for five years. Uh, like I said, I, I spent maybe 10 minutes in front of a green screen. So already off the bat, I would imagine anyone on here is going to have more green screen experience than I did. So you're already in better shape. Uh, and then a couple of years ago, um, I'm originally from uh, Windsor, Ontario, or just across the way there, some uh, Canadian and wanted to move a bit closer to home. So Toledo, a job opened up here. And so I've been here at 13 ABC in Toledo, Ohio for the last uh, couple of years where uh, it's Midwest weather, you know, West Texas, Midwest, you're going to get crazy storms, maybe not hurricanes. It's about the only thing that's missing here. But uh, uh, FIT really prepared me for a lot of uh, great stuff there. So uh, I don't know if you want what you want me to take you through here. We got the whole studio set up here, of course, and all the crazy Star Trek monitors behind me. So uh, Cassandra or whoever wants to chime in, uh, I don't know where, where you want me or what you want me to do with my hands next, because that's always the weird thing, trying <laughs> trying to get this going. Um, so you did, I'm trying to think. Um, maybe start just with like your forecast process, like what you use to make your forecast, that kind of that, thing that would be great that's the kind of thing that i always feel like i'm short on is just general process knowledge because a lot of people give highlights of you know make sure to avoid this or things like this but i still don't have the general idea like it's, uh, it's very right. limited in what i know and i'll do my level best i don't uh is my forecast sheet because i haven't actually forecasted since sunday i'm normally off monday tuesdays i'm tuesday wednesday this week because i need a reporter on monday but give me one moment i'm gonna try to find my forecast sheet here do, do, do. All right, well, that has chicken scratch on it. So I'm just going to give you the morning mats instead. But we just have our own. It's just, you know, your single sheet forecast. A um, lot of different details on it, of course. Or just today, tonight, tomorrow. Um, obviously, this is what you'd be writing on. The Almanac stuff, a lot of that is actually automated. comes from the National Weather Service into our software. I'll, I'll talk about that in a moment. But, um, you know, you're writing down your seven-day, all your little notes and what have you. Here we have Lake Erie, so we do a marine forecast, which is actually sponsored. So it's always great to keep the sponsors uh, happy there. Uh, whatever notes you have, you know, we had the partial solar eclipse a couple of days ago. So uh, put out social posts on that as well. But I'll, I'll bring you around here. I don't know if I've actually flipped the camera around on Zoom before. Aha, there we go. Eventually. Hey, to give you an idea, so I think this, this is a reverse image right now, actually. But uh, this is our studio here. We got the big TV behind. That's where the uh, anchors would sit. It's kind of a little bit uh, tilted here. That's our sports department. And then the almighty green screen over there. And like I said, we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. I'll try to go through the whole process with you here. But right now I'm standing in front of the, uh, the, the weather pod, so to speak. And uh, here's some of the weather software. It basically just call it a more weather-based PowerPoint and get the sense with the, uh, the slides on the one side there and then the forecast on the other. But I'm gonna come down here and I'm gonna try to see, okay. So basically you take your forecast sheet, you open up all of your tabs, I will say this, one of the best resources that you're going to have here is called NWS Chat. I'm not sure if anybody has uh, shown you this before. And it's not letting me zoom in, so 
I'll try to get this as best as possible. You might have to squint, unfortunately, but uh, with all my tabs open there, it's basically just running chat where instantly those tornado warnings, severe storm warnings, whatever will come in. You have the daily forecasts, um, area forecast discussion that you can use. And I know it's very small text showing up there, but um, even if you just go on the National Weather Service, let's say for Melbourne, um, they have, you know, their forecast discussions. I'm sure you've probably seen them in some of the Met classes. Uh, I remember Dr. L going over them, of course. Um, yeah, diurnal cold pool, cumulus field continues squeeze out a shower or two the last few hours. So, you know, it does give you a little bit of groundwork. I always try to read that uh, if they have, you know, the most updated stuff before anything I do to kind of just get into the mentality of, okay, here's the things I should be looking for. If they're not happening right now, where do we go from there? Uh, we're in a bit of a unique thing here. You might notice a couple of tabs open. Uh, here in Toledo, we're actually, we actually have three weather service offices covering us, which can get very annoying. Uh, it's Detroit, Cleveland, and Northern Indiana. We're right in the middle of a radar hole, so to speak. So, you know, the tornadoes and that, or some of the low level features, it's really darn hard to uh, try to resolve sometimes. So that part isn't as great. Uh, we used to actually have our own radar here before I came here, uh, as part of the station, it broke, it's going to cost like half a mil to fix, and we don't have that kind of money. So uh, anyway, like I said, National Weather Service, that chat is going to be some of your best. Um, quick question for the group. Have you worked with uh, MOS, MOS guidance yet? I've you might have for myself. Uh, okay, I was thinking if you did Dr. L's, uh, the one credit course, the weather weather briefing. Yeah, he doesn't uh, this do is where teach I... that anymore, but yeah. Oh, he doesn't. Okay. He uh, does I, that was... Okay, he was he was with all four years when I was there, but that's how I got the Moss guidance in that. So that one's pretty good too. So I'll put out just for example, KTOL. So that's our, our local uh, Toledo station here. You've got NAM, GFS, a lot of these. I just do all guidance forecasts, time period last. Uh, the what the site here is Texas A and M. They have a really good one here. National Weather Service has their official one. Of course, this one just seems a little more intuitive. So if you if you want to look it up. It's Texas A&M. It's like TAMU, T-A-M-U dot E-D-U. Their interface is pretty good. It'll spit out a bunch of numbers. You look at this one, you know, okay, low 47, 74, 51. Uh, this is the NAM, for example. So the North American model. And, you know, if you've been wondering what all of the, uh, you know, geostrophic equation, you got all the stuff that you're, <laughs> that personally, at least I was struggling through. You know, I always said atmospheric dynamics was, Let's take all the science and math you never knew or hated and apply it to four dimensions in the atmosphere. So I take it, it was next kind of semester. I'm scared. You are. Okay. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's involved. Trust me, it's involved. If you keep your head in the game, honestly, some things will just click. Some things might not, but it, it's one of those things where you go through and you go, oh, wait, no, that makes sense. And it all, even if it doesn't click while you're in college, it will come together after the fact if you do go into the profession. It was crazy how much it actually like just started falling into place so if you think it's useless now trust me it isn't uh you're not gonna have to derive equations every day thank goodness for that but um you do get the sense of where some of these biases are so i'll show you for example uh low level cold air the nam does a little bit better on it i've found especially for dry air back in west texas but even here in the midwest uh where we actually have very dry air coming in now after it's felt more like florida it was uh for a few days last week, it was warmer here than it was down in uh, Melbourne, but uh, 47, let's say that's going to be our morning low. GFS is pumping out 49. NAM tends to be a little bit cooler uh, and does better with that low level cold air. And so you figure out some of these biases the models have and go, okay, well, maybe I'll edge a little bit closer to this. You, you know, you try not to just uh, uh, set it all in the middle. My, my dad always used this analogy. It's like, it's like setting an engine or fixing a car engine. Okay, turn all the screws one way, turn them all the other way, and then eh, set them somewhere in the middle. You're fine. Uh, that's a bit of lazy forecasting, but sometimes it can serve you well. Um, I know uh, uh, Dr. Mog, I him, he uh, would always talk about persistence forecasting in that. And, uh, you know, if it just, you've got the trend going, there's not too much change, especially in Florida, then that's going to serve you pretty well here. And I will level with you. You've probably seen a lot of these uh, sites I'm going through here. College of DuPage has really good, sorry, I'm my hands just in front there. Again, never know what to do with my hands. Um, but College of DuPage has a really intuitive um, model lab page. So that's weather.cod.edu uh, slash forecast if you want to go over. Honestly, I would recommend just kind of messing around over here. You've got wind gusts, temperature, vorticity. 
go through, uh, see what they're showing you here. This one's actually a couple days behind because I still have my desktop up from there. Now let's go to the HER, the HRRR, that hourly model. So you'll see what I've got going here. There's not a lot happening right now. So let's go temperature. Why not? It'll be a little more colorful. We got that heat wave coming in out west, by the way. So you can really see that popping up. And of course, we're getting down to, yeah, this one shows, go back. Yeah, this one's showing we're getting down to about 51 tonight. Uh, we're over here, just for reference. If you click on it, sometimes you have uh, model soundings pop up. So there, those are just a couple of the resources there just to lay the groundwork to really start forecasting. And so, like I said, I usually write down all my, this, this one I will bring up my uh, forecast sheet for. Pop it up in front here. Well, of course I got the shadow, but there we go. Bunch of gibberish, bunch of numbers out there. It says KLST because I actually never changed it from that. That was my old station. I was at for five years, but this is the grid I came up with. The high, low percentage. I just decided to lop off the percentage. I only go highs, lows only. But you see a lot of the models here. NWS, what their numbers are. Uh, the blank column is actually what the previous shift would have done. So in my case, the morning shift, just to try to keep on the same page. Um, GFS, NAM, Euro, you see all the different numbers they're spitting out. And once you get to the, uh, let's say, extended forecast here, you see there's, okay, is 79, the Euro is going for kind of where my thumb is, that row there. Uh, 83, 84, you can get some differences sometimes, 10, 20 degrees. It gets a little nuts. This one's uh, not entirely filled out. But you pop down all your numbers. Uh, it might seem intimidating, but honestly, you just keep writing that down and go, okay, this is when I can put my knowledge to the test. Like I had said for the NAM, and you might actually notice there, uh, the NAM going a little bit cooler, uh, let's say for uh, the other day here, 59 degrees. Uh, 4K NAM would be the same over there on the far right. I ended up going 60 for the low. Sure enough, we had 58, if I recall, for that night. So the NAM actually did perform a little bit better there. Uh, the European model um, has been doing better on you know the, the bigger scale things. You know, everybody always cites Superstorm Sandy. Uh, for one thing, uh, or subtropical, what, what, whatever, whatever the nomenclature they went with. But uh, all the numbers there, like I said, don't get too intimidated for that. Uh, you'll be able to spit this out in, honestly, just writing down the numbers, 10 minutes, if that, once you get uh, even just in the first month or so of your job. So this is the front of mine, personally. Uh, my, my chicken scratch, I apologize for. But again, tonight, tomorrow, you got the seven-day forecast. I'll put you know, partly sunny and 40% chance. So I wrote that down 20%, but it's only kind of those pop-up showers and storms and put that there too. Didn't get any of these, but hey, that's why uh, today, but that's why it's a 20%. Uh, pretty dry air the next few days here. So you see it start going up. FD, I just put a reminder for myself, that's Father's Day. And so these are not my numbers because it's been a couple of days here, but I'm going to pop up and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go more in, in depth on this here. But I am going to pop up our, our software just temporarily to give you an idea where there might be a lot happening. Okay, let's see if I can. It's ironic that I can't zoom in on Zoom, but I can do it on other applications. But anyway, uh, if you can look really hard there, folks. There we go. Uh, Thursday, 83, you know, you've got all your icons and everything, your lows, your highs, everything in between. Um, I'm trying to think, See, basically once you're done writing down your forecast sheet is when you put the pedal to the metal and you put in stuff into your software. So uh, before I go on here, I do want to ask, is there any, are there any other questions for the actual, uh, let's say forecasting aspect? I know I've only touched on a little bit of it. Like I said, it can seem intimidating, but uh, just don't be afraid to pipe up here and uh, ask me here. Otherwise I'll uh, we'll move on, but. No, I'm, I'm just as curious to see. Uh how you integrate it as getting it in the first place yeah it's always blending the science with the storytelling you got the science down and so then you try to make it you know visually appealing in that and make it social friendly i suppose you got all the monitors behind me some of these are piping in uh live cameras live action cameras that we have this one behind me is is a uh, downtown one on the far side this is weather nation by the way um sort of weather channel sort of not but they're i want to say they're based out of denver but basically, we have a contract with them where we have sort of those sub channels, those digital channels. Uh, we record hits for them, like one minute hits, so people can basically just get their weather whenever, even if it's not on online. 
you got a lot of old folks, of course. Uh, you, you have to, uh, should cater to them, of course, who maybe don't log on all the time or even can't. Um, oftentimes in the newsroom, we'll get, you know, calls from folks even just wondering what the weather is. And you just, I, I preach patience every time for that. But um, all the graphics in that, you know, they'll, it'll be pumped over here. You might uh, even behind me, uh, not right now, but behind me, see my chief meteorologist there, uh, Jay Bershback, uh, pop up because he had just finished his 5 to 6.30 p.m. and he's coming back for the 11. But I am rambling. You will notice that trend a lot with me. So again, I do apologize. I try to get as much in as possible here. Still not going to zoom, huh? Oh, well. Well, as I mentioned, this is WSI. I'm just going to handhold this because that might get you a little bit closer. And this is one, this is basically the industry standard. This is probably very close to what you're going to see as a forecaster. Um, WSI max application is technically what this is. The company is WSI. They're owned by the weather company, which technically owns the Weather Channel 2. It's a subsidiary of IBM, which is like owned by NBC Universal. It's, it's a whole darn thing that is kind of above my pay grade. But anyway, this is very similar to what you're going to see throughout the industry. There's another one called Baron. Uh, they have their own sort of thing, but then the stations themselves will have these different looks. Um, I work for Gray Television right now, and so you know we're an ABC station, but Disney doesn't own us. They actually used to own this station, but a lot of the bigger markets now uh, will be Disney owned. I know that, or, or uh, excuse me, uh, O and O owned and operated by the actual affiliates themselves. So this look is the Gray Television look. Typically, you'll go to other markets, you go to other cities. If it's a gray television owned station, they might look pretty similar to this, where you have kind of the first warning weather branding, this sort of font, you know, the gray bars and everything. Everybody's different. Uh, I'll give you an example. ABC Orlando is actually where I fill my first, well, my second resume tape, because uh, I caught the eye of Tom Terry, the chief met there. And he said, yeah, you know, come in, film another one. And that's the resume tape that ended up getting me the job in Texas. It was a whole weird uh, uh, career arc that I've taken. But if it gets you there, it gets you there. I'm just now noticing I had only uh, just for example, I had only 20% here on uh, or I had 30% on Friday, rather, this was two days ago. And now the chief Mets bumped it up to about 60%. My goodness, I'm almost out of battery. Well, I can plug in there, no problem. But uh, like I mentioned, this is going to be what you're going to work with. It's basically just a very weather-based PowerPoint where you have all your slides over here on the left. Um, let's just go, for example, uh, let's see. This one's pretty old, or it's a couple of, couple of weeks old. You try to make it visually appealing. You can put, you know, you try not to throw too many numbers at folks. But uh, we had a streak of 90 degrees in May, which is somewhat unusual for us. You see there, the longest one we've ever had is only about five days. Um, and then you just have your standards that are somewhat already built for you. You can kind of make these, uh, uh, these are just the automated ones. You just set it and forget it, you know, kind of like the infomercial um, that just come up with the temperatures automatically, hourly pumped in through the uh, National Weather Service. That's one of our you know, our right now slide, we call it. So you have, we'd be standing over here on this side of the uh, the green screen far over there. And we'll get to that in a little bit. Um, I tell you what, I'm going to plug in and I'm going to try to show you from there instead. Because my phone is running out of juice at an alarming rate. So I apologize for that. And of course, there's hair everywhere. But I have two dogs, a cat, and a ferret, so I'm used to having hair absolutely everywhere. Anyway, so I'm sitting down now. Basically, just the same thing with a little J.J. Uh, Abrams lens flare for good measure there. Sorry about the studio lights glaring off. Um, but you have a lot of those slides. Uh, let's just say, you know, past 12 hours of, uh, of temperatures. This one we built ourselves. And you get into a little bit of the intricacies. And let's say I'll um, try to hit enter here. There it goes. And you can go into build mode. And again, a lot of this is set it and forget it. But this bar, for example, just clicking on it, you go up here, you have a lot of these different you know, options. Don't let that intimidate you. It intimidated me the first time. Um, you, can, you can choose you know, what hour you want to actually show for that particular bar. Um, how you want it to look, what your range might be. So there's a lot of different, um, a lot of different ranges that you could really have with this. But 
it does become a lot easier. I'll, I'll, I'll tell you this. I was incredibly intimidated the first week I started out. We actually did not have this. Uh, when I started out in market 196, like I said, uh, it, it felt like two tin cans you know, for communicating compared to what we have today. And it comes with its own you know, benefits and drawbacks. Yeah, yeah, you're okay. Yeah, I'm, I'm just doing a little seminar thing. You're good. Um, the satellite and radar you can see right now, Again, apologies for the uh, the lens flare there, but we've got all of the uh, all the latest tools and gadgets in that. So what you would do to actually put in your forecast, they have it built in now. There's a little thing, you probably can't see the cursor way up there on the top left side of the screen, but we have a forecast editor. So across the board, you'll start punching in your numbers. And what that'll do is um, you, know, you put your highs and lows, this also goes to our app. We have this first warning weather app. So a lot of the, the news stations, of course, will have that. So go into here and edit. It, it might look different, you know, compared to what you're, you're going to get into. Like I said, a lot of this is going to be hands-on and station specific. So you don't want to get too hung up in this. But um, I think it'll be safe to unplug just for a minute and show you. So let's say this is overnight, 49 degrees, partly cloudy. We've got a little blurb here. Some clouds early, giving way to clear conditions showing you, okay, we're not gonna have rain tonight. There's your wind direction, your speed. A lot of this can be typically automated and you can you know, unlock it, unlock all of these just to uh, change it yourself. And let's just say I wanted to put in, okay, uh, 11 miles an hour, which I actually do think it's gonna be a bit gustier overnight. You'd hit publish once you're done with all of these, you've got you know mostly sunny, let's go down, where's it exciting on Friday, there we go. So let's say high of 86. Scattered storms, 40% chance there. Um, he had put a 60%, so he might actually have to change that. But uh, Or maybe he just bumped it up visually on air and maybe didn't uh, change it on the app just yet. That'll happen too. You know, people will complain either way. It's one of those things that you, you just try not to get intimidated. You have to have sort of a, a, a strong stomach to, to be in this industry, but maybe not as strong as you're thinking. Because uh, you got a lot more kind hearts, you got a lot, a lot more people who understand you're literally forecasting chaos and uh, trying to organize it all. And you try to cater to everybody, but sometimes tuning out is better for your mental health as well. Maybe one more. I'll just show you here for boating forecasts, for example. And uh, because we're out on the lake, and I'll tell you this, we did not design this. So a lot of stuff that will actually help you, WSI, I think Barron does it as well. They'll have pre-made um, slides that you can just download, kind of import into the system here and tweak as necessary. So we actually have a sponsor here. Uh, they're they're uh, a car dealership, funny enough, not boats. You would think we'd get boats, but whatever. Um, saying, okay, we'll have scattered storms tomorrow. This was, an, again, an old forecast. This was on Sunday. Um, showing all the wind, the temperature, and what have you. And so there's a lot of stuff that you can use to help you do as little work as possible, at least for some of the more visual stuff, um, so you can get down to the, you know, get down to the raw stuff. I, I cannot uh, get explain process. to you how reassuring that is, because that is something that probably scared me a lot more than other stuff, was how I'm just going to visually create the backdrops for all these slides all the time. Yes, uh, and, and the trust fact that me, they have I, that. That's amazing to know. It really is good. Yeah. And I, um, because I remember when we converted to WSI, when we converted to this, it looked a little bit differently. I put it in dark mode personally. I'm just kind of a dark mode guy. Uh, like, you know, it's Facebook, Twitter, what have you. But uh, this one, for example, like I, I had shown the bars before, you kind of can tweak them yourselves. Um, uh, the words, you know, just pop on there. Um, but again, for example, the dew points, which I feel is a better measure of, you know, the, the humidity in the atmosphere, the relative humidity, that percentage, and you try telling people that it's like, okay, well, whether it was, you know, 80 degrees or 40 degrees, if it's raining, it's not always 100% humidity, but awfully close. It's like, well, it doesn't tell you how, how sticky it's going to feel outside. And I told you about the, how dry it's going to get here. We're actually going to have our dew points lower than Phoenix tomorrow, I think. Uh, on Wednesday there, 38 degrees and 60 and above. I, I, and you can explain this on air where, where people understand it too. You, ha you have the visual, but you let it help you tell the story where my mentality was always, okay, uh, I'm across the bar. You know, I, I'm in a bar, I'm looking at the TV across the bar, can't hear anything I'm talking about. What can I glean out of this, this visual 
that, you know, the big talky guy on TV is actually talking about. Oh, this really you. helps it. Yeah. So it, it really helps to have the mentality of if you were on mute, how would this help you? Let it help you tell the story. But, you know, you try to give some details. There's always the, the thing that people fall into of um, a lot. A lot of folks these days will just go to the app. And even though you're in charge of the app, you want to at least draw, drive eyeballs, let's say, drive people to uh, looking you know, on air and online. What can you give them in your presentation that they can't just glean off of the app? So that is an incredibly important thing is to give them maybe a little bit of extra science. You know, pe people are smarter than you give them credit for. But at the same time, even in uh, Facebook Lives and that, a lot of people can't find themselves on a map. It's amazing how, how smart yet, also, like, un uh, I hesitate to say uneducated, that is a little mean, but at the same time, some people might not, they'll know what the cloud types are, you know, they'll know what cumulus is and what cumulonimbus is, but they'll always ask, you know, and just trying to, to root through it on Facebook comments of like, you know, Toledo question mark, or, you know, another suburb here, Sylvania question mark, it's like, you know, okay, find yourself on the map, like, that's where the storms are going, and you try to try to get it that way, but like I mentioned, that bar mentality is kind of what I adopted in my first year back in Texas, which was good because there was a lot of bars, but we're getting it off track, um, is, is what can they glean from this that they can't get from the app? And what can they glean from that without you talking? So it, like I said, it might seem intimidating at first. Uh, I remember even just looking back, I debuted on a Monday in July where we hit 100 degrees and then had severe storms the next day. This so was back in 2014. My gosh, it was seven years ago already. Um, and by the end of that week, I already looked back on Monday's performance and went, oh, wow, no, I've already done like way better. And you'll get that. It's like this exponential thing where you just realize how far you've come, even though it's only been a few days or a few weeks, months, years. It really does just compound on itself. So if you're intimidated, I get it. A little bit of fear can help drive you. But at the same time, you get a lot of people who are forgiving. You will be tempted to listen to, you know, the doubt in your own head, uh, the doubt that's on Facebook and Twitter and all that. I mean, it just goes for anything. If you if you screw up a forecast, be like, oh, rubble, rubble, rubble. I'll tell you this: the winter weather is what I feel people are most angry at. You could have a, I, I use an extreme example, but it's like severe storms. And be like, okay, well, he said it would be like a 20% chance. A uh, tornado rolled through. Okay, he said that might be there too. If you get like half an inch off of a snow forecast, people raise hell. It's it's ridiculous. And you try not to let it get to you, but it, it's just amazing how much of a human condition it is in this industry as well. Excuse and I'm a Dan. predictor. Yeah, yes, yes. Well, I wanted to ask as an aside with you mentioning, you know, you know Facebook and Twitter being you said, uh, I'm just curious how much social media presence do you find yourself having as a forecaster as a opposed person? Like how much do they, does uh, the studio or the station that you work for all mandate that you have like uh, X amount of Twitter postings about certain forecasts? Is that included in your kind of daily go through or is that just an aside that they don't really care about? You know, in some stations it is, and it shows that that's why they fall by the wayside in social. Uh, recently, I think our, I never met him, but the news director before ours, for example, at this station didn't really put much, much of an emphasis on, um, on social media. And so as a result, we're actually the number one station in the market. We have like a 65% market share. The next one down has like 25 to 30%. And so they, they take the lion's share of second place. But on social media, they're the number one because they had that jump start, and it, it makes me mad to no end. You know, like you come into this, and you're like, well, okay, it's kind of an uphill battle now, even though we're the number one on air, we're not online. So that's kind of been the thing uh, last couple of years is really driving in with our new news director. Thank goodness, where we have the, this drive to okay, we want you to put out two app videos per shift at least, uh, tell people you know some new stuff. You go on air, we have a weather nation, like I had mentioned up there where, uh, well, it's a commercial right now. <laughs> I can't really tell, but, um, you know, you try to put yourself out as much as possible and this won't come as a shock to anybody. I'm sure, but, uh, my dog pictures, my dog videos perform way better than my actual weather content <laughs> on my personal page. Um, 
and you try to work it in, you know, I actually started doing these things called yard casts. And so it'd just be me kind of in selfie mode for a minute, minute and a half in my backyard going, Hey everybody, we got the dogs running around. It's a gorgeous day, you know, partly sunny skies. We do have storms coming up a little bit later in the day though. Jay has your forecast or, you know, whoever's on shift has your forecast later tonight on action news at five. And people kind of, kind of respond to that. They kind of engage with that. Um, I'm the weekend evening meteorologist. I started out as chief back in San Angelo, like I said, in a smaller market. So you won't have as many eyeballs on you. Uh, I only have, I think I, I have less than 2000 followers on Facebook. And that sounds like, like a humble brag sort of thing, but you get folks in this same market in my same position who have like 20,000. So it's really hard to kind of break in and establish yourself. But if you just stick to, I won't say stick to a script, but stick to who you are, have your personality come out. And that is going to serve you honestly the best than any like any algorithm ever could. You know, I try to post at least like I'll share around, you know, if if one of the other Mets shares like, hey, we got, you know, our severe weather uh, watches out, our severe storm watch out for today. Obviously, I'll share that and be like, hey, keep an eye to the skies later on this afternoon. It really does help uh, drive that engagement. But let your personality come out. You all have personalities, believe it or not. Um because it makes me so mad when you have a yeah, there's nothing happening on predictor <laughs> like i said it's dry the next couple of days i tried to show an example Let's pop back here see what happens but see what what is my battery at i'm at 42 all right i'm gonna hazard it and i'm gonna flip back around and just try to talk on cam because my arm is falling off <laughs> and we're flipping back around there we go. Looking right up my nose, which is always wonderful. But um, yeah, <laughs> what's interesting is trying to cut through the noise on social media too, where you will have, it's mystifying, where you have some of these folks who are, they're called social media urologists. It was one of the funniest terms I heard. And then it just really came home to roost when I realized there are some folks wherever you're going to go who have like 100,000 followers and are posting like 15 day forecasts out of a hurricane on GFS or something and just scaring people. Like it, it's not hard, it, it's not hard to try to say, hey, this is a week out. We are keeping an eye on this, but this probably won't happen. They go, hey, this is showing up and alarm bells and whistles everywhere. And they get shared around thousands of times. It's cutting through that noise that can be the hardest thing actually in social media, let alone building up your own presence. But if you have the truth, you stick to your guns here, people will realize that, you know, you, you develop a following. It's a, and it's a great feeling to have that where you just go around town. You're like, Hey, you're, you're the weather guy. Like, Hey, yeah. Like, you know, just be personable. You know, you're still a station representative at the same time, but being yourself as cliche as it sounds is going to serve you the best here, better than any social media ever could, but you can let it come out on social media as well. Again, I, the, I am just a rambler. I'm a rambling man. I know that probably didn't answer the question as much as you would hope, but that's uh, that's the best answer I can muster no, there. No, so that, that, that's good. That's uh, pretty much all I was asking, and a little more. <laughs> okay. Um, anybody else have any questions here? I'm, I'm going to do a couple more things here, but I just want to make sure I hit on everything here. Anybody unmute? We have, we have five seconds, the Jeopardy theme playing in the head there, which is Jeopardy on right now? No, it is not. Okay. <laughs> but I'm going to go on, around it's here. It's on for me. Yes. It, it's flips because like in South Florida, Jeopardy is on at 7.30 and Wheel of Fortune 7, but like in Central, it flips and it's really annoying when I like go on vacation to Central Florida and I'm like, wait, why is Jeopardy on a seven? I want to watch Wheel of Fortune. Yeah. So like I said, I grew up across the lake and actually see it over, well, over here, basically. I grew up over in Essex County in Canada here, but um, we get the Detroit stations. And so it'd be Wheel of Fortune at seven, Jeopardy at 7.30. And sure enough, in central time, when I was back in Texas, it flipped and it just threw off my whole my whole game plan there. But um, oh yeah, a little pop-up shower between Angola and Fort Wayne just came up in the last uh, 10 to 15 minutes. Probably won't be able to see, but just right here. And it's again, sort of these little pop-up showers and storms. You are no stranger to them in Florida. That's uh, half the reason I'm in this industry was I used to go to Disney World all the time as a kid and be fascinated by all the, you know, the summer storms you could set your watch by and uh, all, all that that entails. So that was really cool. <clears throat> but uh, 
Let me see, what do I wanna to get to here? Well, I think I've covered a lot of WSI here. If you do have any questions on that, again, just, just pipe in. I know I'm kind of hitting on the basics and uh, a lot of you wanna know the details and that is fantastic. Um, I'll get it. I'll get to it as, as soon as you remind me here. But a lot of that's uh, really just going over what you have for putting in the raw numbers, you know, have the idea in your head. I'll flip it around again, actually, here. And I'll see if I can come around the desk here. Well, here's basically what you're going to be looking at. We actually have automation, for example. So there's the, you know, the one lone eye that you're going to be looking on. This is camera three couldn't tell and so you've got these lenses that just like swing around automatically they're coded to which can lead to some hijinks if they're coded incorrectly and they'll just keep you know whipping around the studio like a tornado it's happened before but uh this is our prompter and you will not as meteorologists have to use this too often you're pretty much the only person in the studio that's really going to be ad-libbing a lot um of course, if this breaks and what have you, then the anchors who are on the desk, they're really going to be have to ad lib, but you're like, ah, I have better experience at that. Um, so this is kind of just the view from it. And here's our, you know, programming happening right now. Um, from this view, it might seem like you, you can, you know, squint to see it, but it is a little bit bigger text than you might think. But whatever camera you're going to be looking into, this is going to be your big one over here. Let's see if I can scroll down actually you'll have you might have you might run into this personally there's a foot pedal that actually runs um the prompter and that button over there is what goes in reverse this is mainly your forward one obviously you're gonna just pedal through like a car uh we also have hand tools that'll go back and forth there uh this one i think i should just recently repaired so i sometimes like to call it macgyver the news where you know you just it feels like some days that you're trying to put it together with a paper clip but I'm gonna push the foot pedal here now. And so you see it just running here. Yeah, like in the Action News Now Streaming Center, I'm Josh Krupp. There's a reference for you, Anna. Um, so this was uh, this evening's newscast. Yeah, we check in right now with first warning, Chief Meteorologist Jay Bershback. And so he puts in his weather headlines, looks like he didn't put in his captioning, which the FCC can technically come after us for, but never really do. Just a hint for you. Um, when you're putting in your forecast stuff, by the way, it really does help to write it out. Uh, so you have a better idea and just type it out. So you have a better idea of what you're actually talking about. If you're like, oh, wait, no, that's kind of a good line. I might use that to start off my um, my weathercast. So here's the green screen, like I mentioned. It, ours is actually a corner, uh, a corner lot, more or less, which is a little weird. Uh, I, I only know a few stations that really have it like this. Uh, the shade of green by the way that this is it's it's like a chroma key green it's specific and i want to say that just one can of paint costs hundreds of dollars because it's like such a licensed thing it's ridiculous you would have a, what, what'd you say that's there? surprising yeah it's it's nuts i might it might even go in the thousands i don't even think I, i'm i think i'm selling it short here uh you know what i could call back i'm gonna see if uh i'm gonna call back to the um control room so just give me a moment I'll leave it on there for you for now i want to see if they can flip on the monitors there just to show you give a better sense of you know where you're standing we're on the green screen and that so give me one moment here if i remember the four digits here <laughs> thanks for staying with me so far by the way guys <laughs> No, you kidding me? This is some of the most insightful stuff I've had this entire summer. I love this. That's good to hear. All right, I'll see if the director's there. We don't have live programming on right now, but sometimes they actually have to run breaks manually. Oh, hey, Alex, uh, would you be able to, I'm actually doing a seminar here with uh, my alma mater, uh, trying to show off some of the meteorology stuff. Would you be able to pop on the uh, side monitors here and uh, like pop on weather one? Yeah, at the key. Uh, would you be able to? Yeah, so I can I can see myself. Yeah, yeah. I just want to show them examples. Excellent. Thank you. Oh, it's so nice when everybody's on board with everything. Okay, so he's gonna turn those on in a second. Yeah, there we go. That was just about a second. I got you on my uh, my monitor here, so. That's a, a creepy view here, but you get the sense. Okay, so I'm pretty much standing right here. Like I had mentioned, this is gonna look a little more distant on Zoom than you, what you actually have. You know, objects are closer than it may appear. Um, when you look over to the side here, for example, so you're like, all right, turning now, 
Uh, Brian, Wassion, Napoleon Defiance, you're under a severe thunderstorm warning. This is what it looks like. You're looking directly at, over at the monitor and people think, of course, you're, you're you know, just, just a magician looking over at this green screen. It's the weirdest feeling at first to go, okay, we're looking over here. Now we're talking to the viewer. Even though the camera is just above the monitor, you're still trying to look at what you're doing. And then if you decide to move over here, hey, okay, we've got another one over here. So, you know, you're trying to turn, and some of you, I don't know if, if you have the green screen experience and what have you just yet, uh, but that is what you're gonna be looking at, I'm sure, uh, whether it's FIT or just anywhere. Uh, there was actually, there used to be blue screens for the longest time here, uh, not here, but uh, across the industry. And green just became the standard, which I'm glad for because blue constitutes like half my wardrobe. So I'd probably just, you know, turn invisible and key out, so to speak. But um, that's basically what you're looking at here. You, typically, those weather hits are about, it really does depend on the market. Uh, so here, this is market number 80, 80 out of 210 in the United States. Um, like I said, I'd start off pretty low, market 196. Um, Orlando, for reference, they cover Orlando, Daytona Beach, and Melbourne. Their market, I want to say 17 or 18. So they're pretty high up there. You know, it depends on population. New York's number one, LA's number two. Uh, I want to say Dallas is number five. So you, you could, there are some you could probably make educated guesses on. I want to say Detroit, just north of us, is number 11, although they've kind of fallen off a cliff. They've had, uh, you know, population leaving. So their metrics go down every year. So sometimes you lose some spots, but that's splitting hairs at this point. We're considered a medium sized market. I'm just going to keep on selfie mode here, but um, we're a medium sized market. 196, obviously, pretty much a lower end market, but even they, like I said, we'll have this WSI or Baron, they'll have some of that industry standard equipment. So you'll still be able to show the high tech stuff and show off what you know. And it's, again, you are going to be scared that first uh, time, the first week, month, maybe even year, maybe you feel out of place. You're not nearly as out of place as you think. And that's something I really wish I could, you know, go back and tell myself because I was just nervous as all hell trying to stay on air forecast get to folks and i look and i'm like well i don't seem that nervous on air but inside i'm terrified a little bit of fear can you know can get you going get you driven but at the same time complacency that's something you don't want you always want to try to reinvent yourself or at least keep it interesting for yourself so you're keeping it interesting for your viewers even if it's a boring day you know i put out a stat the other day where um we've had such a slow start to severe weather season here because we haven't had a severe storm warning in now 211 days in the entire viewing area. So it's Northwest Ohio and then the, uh, well, I'll show you here actually, I know I'm zoomed in, but uh, Northwest Ohio and then the three counties in Southeastern Michigan and then Detroit is actually right where you see the uh, snow indicator up there. I can move my head, but um, so we're actually pretty close to bigger markets. You know, you almost fill in the gaps there, what have you, but um, it's, uh, where where am I going with this? Trying trying to think, but anyway, now now I'm getting I'm getting way off track. Uh, but this, as far as the green screen goes, once you step in front of it, I, I remember back in back in Texas, I was the only one in the entire studio cutting doing my first severe weather cut in ever, which is only about a week into my job because middle middle of July coming off the dry line in West Texas is just incredible, but. Uh, I'm just standing there. The tornado sirens were actually going off because it was a little weird quirk. Um, that particular town would sound the sirens for severe storms. So if it was, you know, 60 mile an hour or uh, one inch hail that it was putting out, it would sound the sirens, which got a little confusing at times. And I have to keep telling people, but it's one of those things where you feel the adrenaline your way. Wait, I got this because I have to get this. And then you got it. Like it's it's maybe not as easy as I'm saying it, but you have that more experience coming out of FIT, coming out of whatever school you're graduating from, than you might realize. So that is something I want to really impress upon you tonight: is don't get discouraged. Uh, I won't tell you not to get scared because honestly, it's going to happen anyway. You might as well roll with the punches on that. But uh, take a couple of deep breaths. If you mess up, go at it again. It's a new day. People won't care. You know, as long as you don't swear on air, which I can sometimes have a mouth of a sailor, but uh, that's going to be some one of the things, too. It's like, well, I've got five jokes rolling through my head, all of which I can't say on air. But um, when it comes down to it, 
you know more than you think you know. And so standing, you know, where I am right here in front of the green screen, first time out, take a couple deep breaths and just let it run. So uh, again, if you have uh, any more questions about this part here, I'm gonna uh, roll back off. Actually, I'm, I'm gonna show you because I haven't even shown you the remote yet because I can't find my remote. That probably explains things. There we go. It's a little bit discolored right now in the middle there, but that's our play button. So that makes a little bit of sense right in the middle here. So I'll set it to this one specifically. So hit the play button. It should go forward. Oh, wait, I'm actually on. There we go. Oh, shoot. Okay, I'm shutting down actually, folks. So give me one second. I'll rejoin the call here. One second, I apologize. Yes, we finally ran out his battery. Yep. <laughs> yep. That, uh, Cassie, <laughs> you got me about the form and I filled it out. And now I feel like I need to change like half of my answers. <laughs> <laughs> I read it. You, you, you did fine. You, you did fine. You're no, I great. changed my mind on some of them now. <laughs> you can just refill out the form. Oh, really? Well, let me do that. Hopefully. I Wait a minute. Know. Let me get a biased interview system. <laughs> I don't know. Can I like remove you? Could I just keep putting in more forms oh, I if I want a certain your, thing I to happen? I could delete your response. I could delete you and you could redo it. I, you know what? You might as well. All right. You've been deleted. Because, ah, oh, man, he's answering some of the biggest questions I had. I feel like I could go in and try and film a forecast today. There we go. I, I got one person who can do it. We're on a roll. Got one. No, I oh, just need to find a day on. where I'm not staking things into the beach for radar. Now he's gone, gone. Rejoining in a sec. He just messaged me. I figure he'll be back. Yeah, he'll be back. So, yeah, I'm sorry. I've been kind of slow about getting this stuff done. I You're slept for like a straight day because if like, like, oh, that's fine. Welcome back. Welcome. Okay. Let's see if I can turn this back up. All right. So sorry. Like I said, uh, yeah, it's always great when technology doesn't work and that will happen on air. Sometimes the whole thing will just completely fritter out. Um, and you kind of have the freedom to roll with the punches in that regard um, because the news anchors, you know, they have to be all somewhat stoic in that. Of course, they're reading a story about your know, crime or politics, something like that. For you, it, it'll show off your personality better for, for, say, if the technology just completely crashes. Sometimes it happens. It happened more often back in Texas when we didn't have this kind of software. But you're like, well, all right, here's what you need to know. And because you have that knowledge in your head, you go, yeah, we got storms coming on on Friday. So maybe pack an umbrella, you know, going out on the way out to work. You're still giving people the info and it shows that, you know, you know how to be human, frankly, like you're not a robot. You're not uh, you're not just somebody giving the forecast. You're a person talking to a friend almost. And that's how they will view you if you, know, if, if you get pretty darn good at your job. And they'll stop you in the supermarket or at the restaurant and what have you and go like, you know, hey, were you looking at rain next week? Like, yeah, you know, it's probably gonna rain next week. We're looking at this, this, that. And like, okay, cool, thanks. And it, it, gives you, it gives you a little power to be a member of a community when, not only when you do your job correctly, but when other stuff makes you almost do your job incorrectly. I'll give you an example, by the way, and it's actually happening right now. If you notice over my, my shoulder here, I've got two different video sources, and this was a weird quirk I found only a month ago, um, where if you have the same video source up in both computers, we actually have a backup computer over here. We typically use that one for traffic in the mornings than just the main weather one, but they're on the same video source and they can't resolve it, so they keep flipping between, and I'm like, what the heck is going on? So I'm going to get off that right now. See if the mayflies are going. No, I don't think they are. Time lapse? Uh, maybe not. So I can go to sleep, but thank you so much. Oh, yeah, they, and thank you so much for, for coming in there, too. Yeah, are you uh, working a, a morning thing there? I knew you were yeah, talking about it. Oh, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah, you get that. So, good night, Anna. All right. Good night, Anna. Thanks so much. Take care. Yeah, and Anna, I'm sure has you know some firsthand experience already with, with uh, some of this. Hopefully, not crashing on air, but uh, 
it's one of those things that uh, could certainly happen. So I know we're coming up on, well, we're just at the hour mark here. We already had Zoom crash on me once already. My phone actually is using up a lot of uh, battery power because of Zoom. I was not expecting that. So uh, try to prepare, hope for the best and prepare for the worst, I guess is what it is. And for all the uh, lens flare going on, we just want to sit down. So does anybody else uh, have any questions here? Um, I tried to go through as much as I could. I'll show you the... Uh, the remote here that's kind of what i was going for so you're going to get this your play button you know just plays it on through scenes you can skip ahead skip forward uh skip backward um flip between computers actually is uh so max one max two two is usually the one that's for for traffic over there and uh hot button is actually interesting by the way once you hold this if you designate we always have the extended forecast designated so if you're running out of time the producer's in your earpiece going okay wrap or you got only 15 seconds and you know you have like three more slides to go you're like eh, crap okay so then you hold that down for a couple of seconds it automatically skips ahead to whatever you've made that slide in which case it's almost invariably the seven day that's what you usually you know end on um before i forget this is actually the earpiece by the way and it makes you look like a secret service agent every time, but you typically plug in. Does he have the box? Yeah, he has the box. So I clip it onto the back of my uh, my collar here. So that's for the guys. If you're uh, uh, if you're wearing a dress or something like that, um, maybe if you're a guy wearing a dress, whatever, I won't judge. But uh, maybe maybe on air there'd be a little weird. But um, you would maybe have a garter actually. Uh, around the thigh. That's what usually our uh, female anchors have or some of the female meteorologists. Um, and so that'll just, you know, keep it on. So you won't have to just strap this directly to the dress or your mic pack for that matter. So uh, it's called an IFB. Uh, don't ask me what it stands for. I actually do not know. Some of you may have a better idea. You plug it in directly there and you have a little bit of a, a volume control. So this will probably pop on green, solid green. There it goes. And so if I were to plug this in right now, I probably will hear just regular programming. Oh, it looks like he doesn't have it on. Okay, they can switch that in the back, but I don't need to hear it right now because we're not in the middle of a show. Uh, so then you clip this either onto your uh, your belt or just put it in your pocket is what I usually do. It stands for interruptible uh, feedback. It really oh, does. Fold back, okay. sorry. Interruptible fold back. That's what I meant, sorry. I that is a weird... You could give me a thousand years and I wouldn't have guessed that either. I just always known it as IFB and it's one of those things. And I'll tell you this, you get a lot of acronyms in this industry too. We call this, this big monitor over here, we call the BAM. And I'm like, what the heck? Why the heck do we call it BAM anyway? And the it's engineer turns to me and he's like, yeah, no, it's not. I know that's the joke I made. He goes, no, BAM stands for big ass monitor. <laughs> it's like, okay, let's just run with that. <laughs> So it's like, all right, yeah. you can it's never call it that. Well, exactly. then if we're using that acronym, we have a BAM in the, in the studio in F, um, FITV basement, because that's where we have it. And like the monitor they use is like this huge BAM that's like right in front of you, it's literally <laughs> in front of you. So you just aim the camera, so it's literally right in front of you to see everything. And you can't miss it. Like, I won't wear my glasses on there because... I, I did a practice run with it. I can't wear it because it glares my glasses so much. I'm like, glad that oh. screen's big because I don't wear contacts either. It hurts my eyes. Yeah, like, a, a lot of folks. <laughs> yeah, a lot of folks, I will say this. A lot of folks who do wear glasses uh, normally will wear contacts instead. If you don't wear contacts, it's not the worst thing in the world, but sometimes the monitors can be a little bit smaller, as you see here. So um, you can even... You know, not having to fight for it necessarily, but you can get bigger monitors, like you said, like that, but even just bigger than the somewhat tinier ones that we have on the side here, just as the guides. But um, I had a friend back in San Angelo, back in Texas, who wore glasses, found they were glaring, tried to wear contacts, really couldn't. So even on some of his days where he was forecasting, he's like, yeah, man, my eyes are just so dry. Like, I, I can't do this. So um, he would still go on in, on air like he was otherwise fine and go on a forecast. Um, but what you can even do is like step a little bit closer and it, it almost gives you a better personality or a better presence and, and you know, stepping into your living room here, folks, <laughs> but you can see, you know, further in and you're the one looking at like, you know, we're looking at 83 over here in San Angelo, probably 84 over in Mertzen, but there are some storms on the way, you know, this, the lean in, it isn't necessarily a tell, 
Uh, some people just do that. There's all different techniques that you might, uh, you might lean into. I never actually went, you know, I just went to FIT for meteorology and we never had the, um, this program, you know, this broadcast meteorologist program. So a lot of that, I just kind of had to pick up on the fly and at work. Uh, so you're already ahead of the game. And that's going to serve you very well, I think. You know, once you start getting on the green screen, once you start uh, putting together reels and that, as I mentioned, I, mine was filmed in the basement of a, a community college just because I knew the AV guy uh, over in um, uh, back in Canada. And that got me go, filming a different resume tape with, with Tom Terry there in ABC Orlando and then eventually off to the races finally. But uh, getting in the door is going to be a pretty hard, hard thing. Um, I will say post during the pandemic, a lot of places had hiring freezes. So uh, I, I would just like casually scroll on um, tvjobs.com. That's a subscription one. I want to say it's like 60 bucks a year, which can seem steep. But, you know, if you get the job, then it, it's worth it in the end. Uh, they helped me get my second job here, actually here. And they'll do job postings. A lot of the industry people will do job postings there. TVjobs.com if, you if you're writing it down. But even just like Glassdoor or Indeed or whatever, you know, the usual, the free sites should usually get you a lot of these opportunities. Uh, I know some folks, you know, post like Dr. L, for example, will post sometimes some of these positions through, uh, through fit scams and through uh, the emails, the list servers. And uh, with that, uh, having been said, with TV jobs, you look at these jobs and you're like, oh, wow, there's only like two Met jobs this week. That was like through a lot of the pandemic, like I mentioned, the hiring freezes. Now they're starting to come out of it and you have more opportunities. So you, like whenever you're graduating, I'm sure, assuming we don't have a, you know, a worldwide calamity between now and then, again, uh, fingers crossed for that one, uh, you should have a better uh, leg up in the industry as well, especially if you already have a resume reel put in place and you have that experience at FIT. So a lot of that is going to serve you pretty well. Um, trying to think what else here, but yeah, getting your foot in the door is gonna be the big thing. Once you have that, uh, like I mentioned, don't, don't uh, get discouraged, have a little more confidence in yourself, which is like, you know, it's like saying, don't be depressed or a track coach telling you just run faster. You're like, okay, but how? It's one of those things you almost have to find for yourself, but there are just a few little things we've talked about, you know, tonight that can help you and, and serve you better in the long run. So uh, anybody else have uh, any questions here? I know we're uh, running a little bit long here, uh, 807. I don't know how long you <laughs> typically run, but uh, just want to get as much info out there as possible for you to help you. No, this, this has been fantastic. I've, I, I've loved this. This is exactly what I was hoping to get was a bit of a kind of a direct view of what I would be hands-on with in theory is I I've enjoyed every minute of this so far. Yeah. Excellent. And that's, that's good for me to hear too, because it's always, you never know. I was with college players. I was, I was in CP there. And uh, if it worked for them, I don't even know if I would have the stage presence like here to be on air, to be honest, but you will, you will have that experience just being on, on the green screen on air, whether you're in drama club or not, so if you have the passion for this, you will succeed. That's kind of the beauty about this industry is once you're in the door, especially in the smaller markets, one of the greatest, I, I call it a blessing and a curse is that sometimes in those smaller markets, you have little oversight, which, okay, sometimes you don't have as much handholding, but you can also kind of sandbox it, find your own way, find what your personality is on air, and then get going that way. I got to take a swig of water here. That was always a good thing to have, by the way, too. In the first year I was in Texas, I barely ever had water here while I was in the studio. And I'm like, so I'm an idiot. And then I would just finally start bringing water and staying hydrated. That's going to be a big thing, too. So you're not <clears throat> coughing on air. And I throw in a little try now, of course. Um, what else? I don't know. That's, I know we went over a lot today. I'm sure I'm probably missing a few things as well. But <clears throat> I will say this. Another one of the uh, things where technology is great when it works and not so much when it doesn't. This was uh, June 23rd, 2017. Boy, we're coming up on the four year of that. Um, back in Texas, I was doing a live shot in 109 degree weather. That was a heat record there. I have only a few degrees because they regularly would hit 100 in that part of Texas. But <clears throat> again, you have the drier air, kind of have more desert extremes there compared to, let's say, Florida. And I went up within a half hour of, of just driving back up to the studio is a somewhat small town, only about 15 minutes away. We had a severe storm pop up. I'm like, okay, I'm keeping an eye on it. Well, set, this ramped up from 60 
to 100 mile an hour winds in the span of, I think, three radar scans, so about 15 minutes. And it was insane. It blew through town, knocked us off air for about two and a half hours. I can remember I called it Blair Witch the News because we had radar scope. And by the way, radar scope is fantastic. If you don't have that on your phone, it's $10. It might seem steep for an app. It is amazing. I, I just swear by it uh, for, as a radar application. But anyway, we had radar scope up on one phone, recording Facebook Live on the other. Hi, Alex. How's it going? <laughs> it's like, what are you doing back? So Alex, so he's, he's our uh, TMP, he's our uh, show director more, uh, more or less. And so he was the one who helped pop up the monitors there. So thank you very much for that. Down the batteries go. He's changing out the batteries, by the way, for the, uh, the mic. So did I give you the, okay, I yep, put it, I, I put it back there. Set. I'm not stealing yes, anything from Jay for a lot of it. But um, okay, where were we? Yeah, so June 23rd there, we got knocked off the air, but we made it work. That is going to be one of your greatest assets is trying to be flexible with this and go, oh yeah, we can get that on air. Maybe not no problem, but uh, I <laughs> I I'm kind of a Star Trek fan and I think of Scotty where it's like, all right, we're giving her all she's got or you know, we'll try to make it work. We'll do the best we can. And you try, that's kind of, that'll be your greatest asset in this industry is flexibility and trying to make it work. Even if it doesn't, you're like, well, we've tried everything we can, we'll know for the future. And learning from yourself, learning from others, that willingness to learn from yourself and others is going to be one of your greatest things as well, too. So uh, anybody else, any, any questions on absolutely anything off the wall, what have you? No, you've been great. Awesome. Yeah, I can't, That's, I can't yeah. even that so me. thorough. I can't even think of anything this. off the top of my head. Yeah, tons of super awesome. helpful info. So thank you. Yeah, of course. See, 40%. Yeah, I can risk that. So I have, look like I'm in close encounters with all the lights over my head here. <laughs> End it here. But um, yeah, thank you so much for having me on here, guys. I know we were, I was talking to Cassandra here for, it was probably a, about a month ago or so. And then a couple of days ago, we were talking about this. Like, oh yeah, I know I should probably use the studio for this. And it's helped me a lot better than trying to just describe it. And it kind of goes back to what I was saying about, hey, have your visuals up here. The person behind the bar or the person across the bar, how are they going to see you know, what, what you're trying to communicate. So you make it, you know, flashy, but you don't have too many words on a slide. And I'm sure you've run into that for any class presentation you've had to do yet is uh, keep it simple, but at the same time, uh, you know, try to inform as much as possible, it's even if it's just Ray, you talking about If you put stuff. too many lines on there, could just take points off your PowerPoint, you're just screwed. It's like, if you have more oh, than yeah. like nine lines, bye. I'll say, oh, okay. Yep. That's uh, doc, that's uh, doc, Dr. Ray, you were Dr. saying? Dr. Ray, yeah. He does that for our presentations. For, for climate, for climate, okay, yeah, yeah climatology. climatology. I, oh man, what was the name of my paper? I wanted, that was the longest research paper I ever I ever did at FIT. It was like the, eff, the effect of tropical and uh, the effect of the Madden-Julian oscillation on tropical and extratropical interactions on seasonal and intradecadal timescales. I can't believe I remember that title but that's as short as he would allow me to make it. It was like three lines long in my abstract. I'm like, well, okay, there's a page right there. But oh, yeah, that was like a 40 page paper. I had to present on the MJO this spring. I think I may have used oh, your nice. paper. Oh my gosh, it's hilarious. That that's amazing. Such, yeah. That sounds very familiar. That's fantastic. Oh, <laughs> it'd be amazing. I cited him twice in that. I'm like, okay, we're going to go with a power move here. I'm going to cite the guy who's grading my paper. I ended up getting an A, and I was, that was the paper I was the most proud of ever in all my four years at FIT, I tell you. But, but my next one, I think, was probably one of the English classes, <laughs> like, like some pros in that. But, uh, yeah, there's a lot that you'll be surprised that it'll help you uh, in this industry uh, that you're doing right now because there's always that thing, even going back to grade school or high school, whatever, going, when are we ever going to need to know this? You'd be surprised. You're not going to have to derive equations every day. Thank the freaking Lord for that, I got to say, but uh, I never, I never liked uh, um, differential equations, never like me, I should say. Oh, but, uh, no, thank you. Yeah, you, you get, you get into the basics and that does help you realize where these models are coming from, all the math that's been put into it. So you yourself don't have to put the math into it every day. So you get, you get those biases, you kind of get where the models are coming from and go, okay, this handles a little bit better. So it does help. It, it is worth it in the end, whatever you're doing right now. So, and the forecast helps. challenge for anyone who doesn't know what the forecast challenge is, the WEX challenge, that's helpful to doing forecast and practicing your forecast also. 
I probably should have yes, mentioned that. that at some point, but I, when you started <laughs> mentioning practicing, that's a good way to practice. So like every two weeks, they rotate like a different city, and you use like the moss. That's how I know how to use the moss because I learned it from yep. doing that. So that's how I always exactly use where the moss. I learned it. That's, yep, where that's exactly where I learned for it too was the Moss guidance. What was for the uh, weather challenge and that, yeah, that's run out of Penn state there. And uh, we actually, well, it's funny, it very similar, but there's a thing called weather rate where it will actually, you'll plug in your numbers, like even just here in the industry, like your highs, your lows, whether it's going to rain or not, what the cloud cover is. So pretty similar to weather challenge, the way it's set up there. And we forecast, I want to say it's for the next four days out from, from wherever your shift is kind of a, you know, rolling average thing. And we are the most accurate by, uh, by a fair margin, I think in the entire, um, uh, city. And we actually get to advertise that on air and say, we are literally the most accurate, like measured, verified the most accurate forecast possible. And so that kind of stuff, like the weather challenge and that will really, really help you there. So yeah, the, I, I, We'll always love plugging that, but yeah, the weather, the forecasting challenge is a great way to just have that experience. A lot of it is very ap uh, applicable to what you're going to learn. And in the it's industry. entertaining when you like bust when literally like the low goes bolt. It happens so many times in the spring. Our low, the low was like way lower than we all said, and just entertaining, laughing at it all, all together. Yeah. Like wow, we all just if it's if it's a happy. dry. If it's dry air, I will say if you're forecasting for like Phoenix, Arizona, or something. Always go higher than the high and lower than the low that the MOSS is saying. I would say 80% of the time you're going to beat out the uh, the model forecast on that. And same thing with, like, I think, the winds in te Texas. I think we might have done Houston's, like, go higher than what the MOSS shows or something. I forgot. Or is it lower? I tell you, it's one of the ways. I, I feel like 20, 20 to 30 miles an hour was almost an average day in Texas, in, in my part of West Texas. Once you get up to, like, 40 miles an hour, you go, oh, yeah, it's a bit breezy. <laughs> like. It was what, one of those things where you just had the wind you know, sweeping down the plains, more or less Oklahoma. But uh, the dry line was incredible, just some of the dynamics there. And each, each area is going to have these, these different weather dynamics. We've got the lake, which can either enhance or just kill storm potential. This week, it's been doing more killing than enhancing. But uh, so it's been, like I said, kind of almost boring. I hate to say that because I say Mother Nature is a second half team around here where uh, we had a pretty slow winter and then we had 14 inches of snow dumped on us. That's the <laughs> third most, third most ever in a single day, which is saying something here, part of the Midwest and went, Oh, okay. And I was looking at these model outputs. The Euro was putting out something like 16 inches. I'm like, okay, well we can throw that out. And as we're getting closer and closer, I'm like, uh, Oh, okay. never mind. So there are stuff, you know, you could be in here six, seven years like I have, and there's still things you're going to be learning. You'd be here 30, 40 years for all I care, and the weather will still throw some things at you where for all the advances we have, sometimes, you know, gut feelings and just going with what you know might serve you better. Um, they were kind of, I know, kind of across town. I hate to say this because, you know, I, I would like to think everybody's on equal playing field when you're in this industry, but they almost tend to hype it up a little bit or, or seems like they are, and then they dial it back, and you're like, well, no, like, like pick a forecast and adjust it as necessary, but go with your best gut feeling here and stick to it. Don't just go start way high and then go way down. Mm -hmm. It's like, you know, you, you can, you can trust yourself enough more than you can trust the models. You use them as a guideline, but you don't use them as gospel. Yeah. So that that won't help you too. Funky. That's why you look at like the synoptics and stuff. That's how synoptics are actually very important. And a lot of, a lot of people yes. haven't had synoptic yet, which is, the, the struggle we're starting to see, because it's only like out of the like 11 or 12 people we have, only three people have done synoptics. So is that, is that still with uh, Mr. Oh my gosh, what am I thinking? Uh, synoptic meteorology. Why is it, isn't he married to Dr. L? Or is he his partner Split? still? I forgot. Mr. Split? Split yeah. No, because <laughs> since, yeah. they're, he, since they're married, Split had to move um, to aviation meteorology. Mr. Tumbiolo oh, does. Okay. Mr. Tumbiolo does oh, synoptic. Okay. Now. Interesting. I remember, I remember the name. I think, was he just starting out? He, he or came, maybe one of my yeah, friends. He did. started out, but then he had like some medical issues and left. And then he started he came back in like 2017 or something. Okay. All right. Like I said, I graduated 2013 there. But uh yeah, interesting. Yeah, for it's some reason in my amazing, head, I still though. had split doing. Yeah, Split's I had split great. still doing synoptic. And he did he, that class. I think synoptic helped me more actually than atmospheric dynamics. And that's not to discount, you know, Dr. Uh, uh well, Dr. Rell in my case, doing uh, atmospheric dynamics, but you're going to learn a lot of different things and it's going to seem intimidating. I'm sure it already does for any of the classes that you're doing there. All I can say is charge on through college. Isn't forever. Enjoy it while you can, but at the same time you get to get rid of the bad parts 
you don't have to derive, you don't have to, you know, do a lot of the stuff you hate later on. And if you get into the industry uh, and, and have enough drive there, then you'll, you'll be served pretty well, I should think, with any of that kind of advice. Okay. Well, thank you very much. Uh, this has been yeah. very informative. Uh, I really enjoyed this. Yeah, thank good. you so right. much. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah, thank you so much for for letting me ramble on here. You know, uh, I don't get a chance, especially these days, we don't really do the school talks, especially the last year and a half, because we can't go into them or they're not having school in person. So uh, th this has kind of been a nice refresher course just to do this, but also just for, for industry folks too. Uh, I tell you, it's the hardest for high schoolers. Kindergartners have so many good questions. High schoolers are just like, okay, dude, nap whatever. Time. Like, we're fine. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, I was going to take a nap right here. Um, but like have, having you guys there and asking the good questions and being inquisitive as you are, it really helps me too and helps me, you know, keep my enthusiasm for this. So again, I want to thank all of you here. Uh, my, my wife's probably wondering where the heck I am. She actually works as a producer up here at the station. So she's got her shift tomorrow. But uh, I haven't had dinner yet, so probably going to go home and try, try to make All something right. out of that. But yeah, I should we'll have dinner. <laughs> but thank yeah, you already. again it's so much. Long. I I had a, such a craving, by the way, when I when I opened up uh, when I started talking here. I don't know how I had such a craving for a milkshake at the Black Cat, and I'm like, man, I miss that. Like that was one of my things. I would always go down at least once a week, at least once a week. Usually after like uh, college players rehearsal. We'd go down there. We'd go to, you know, Denny's or Steak and Shake or something. But Death yeah, by man. Chocolate what? at the Cat is my favorite still. The Death by yeah. Chocolate milkshake. Is that, what's the, do they still have the one with the bacon in it? They had the, the Elvis too. That one was good. Uh -huh. What? Yeah, they had, they, I think they only had it for a couple of years. They might have actually gotten rid of it by the time I was there. But they put I little, never like, heard bacon. of bacon. They've been closed for a little bit because of COVID. But I was like, I haven't heard of yeah, bacon. They I were figured. closed last year. They had like, it basically just takes like a smoky chocolate sort of thing, but it was like, a, it was called, that's what it was called, the shake and bake. That's what they call it. So, oh, man. Uh, yeah, that was pretty darn good. I remember that one, but they had like a strawberry, like a strawberry red velvet or something too. Or, oh, that sounds The good. monkey, no, there's like a monkey, uh, funky monkey, was that it oh, or something? The mo oh, the, it was like, oh, I know what you're talking about. That one's good too. Yeah. Funky monkey or monkey banana or, oh. Monkey, monkey business, maybe? So no, monkey something business. Like that. Monkey it's business. A... Yep, that's it. Monkey yeah. business. Yeah, anyway. Okay. I got some other stuff to get to you. It was very nice to yes. hear from you. Sorry. I yeah, go. yes. no, we're Thank good. So we're much. ended. <laughs> yeah. Thank All you right, again. Best of luck in whatever yeah. you guys do. And uh, I got faith in you. Have fun. And uh, just take care, everybody. If you have any questions, I got uh, meteorologist Dan Smith on Facebook and Twitter as well. So you can just drop me a line there and I'll, I'll do my best to answer. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Bye, right. everyone. Thank